the Stellar Sound podcast, the first ever episode. The Stellar Sound podcast connects you with artists, musicians, and other creatives. You might not have heard of them yet, but their works and their ways of thinking hold the potential to inspire you and your own creativity. We discuss, we challenge each other, we are serious, and then often we are not. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. For extra immersion in our spacey stellar environment, you can join our Discord server. Now, in this first episode, we are introducing you to Leo, or just Leo. He's a bassist, singer-songwriter, and a multi-instrumentalist from the green and magical town of Zutphen in the Netherlands. From having built a steady community on YouTube, he has now ventured into releasing his debut album in 2021. We will explore who stands behind the humble nickname of Just Leo, how autism and mental health in general play a role in this, and take a peek at his creative strategies. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to thank our sponsor for this episode. Can get your nerd on because it's Fae Games. F-A-E Games. Fae Games is a company that specializes in creating Dungeons and Dragons adventures and campaigns. Their latest product is an adventure called The Corruption of Cavestar. It's a mid-level adventure that takes the players to the cavernous city of Cavestar, where they investigate the mysterious disappearance of several merchants. Soon they learn that the deep gnome inhabitants are acting strangely. One might even say possessed. The players will have to travel through the mines beneath the city to find and destroy the source of this evil. On their way, they will make new allies and of course obtain magical treasures. If you're interested, you can find a digital copy on Drive-Thru RPG or order exclusive physical copies via our podcast. In 2021, they are launching a new campaign setting, so if you want to know more or chat with the creators directly, you can join their Discord on www.faegames.com slash community, spelled as faegames.com slash community. to the first ever Stella Sound podcast episode. Hello. Hi. Now, I've known you for now almost three years, I think, um, at least online. And I suspect that most of our listeners also know you as Leo Base Covers and Leo Base Guy. You have quite the friendly bunch of followers online. They've been watching, they've been learning from your base channel. And I bet, however, that not a lot of people expected you to be releasing a debut album. Definitely not as a singer-songwriter. So how did that came to be? I mean, first of all, we've known each other for three years. Mm-hmm. That's, that's insane. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like I never really feel like I have to stick to one instrument. So yeah, most people know me as a bass player, but... Mm-hmm. I do play guitar, I do play bazooki, I can drum a little, I like to sing. So not sure really, I just, I really felt like I had to do this. And um, even when it comes to writing, I know that a lot of people are expecting, you know, very bass heavy music or, yeah, you know, just songs with a lot of, you know, groovy riffs or low riffs, whatever. But I really didn't focus on bass too much really it was just i felt like i had to write music and so yeah there was not really a thought there like i should do this i should do that it just just happened came naturally it just happened yeah 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 well i have to say i really love all the songs uh, obviously we're working on them together on several of, of those songs yeah but um, a lot of people will not know what the songs sound like and may have not heard of your single yet. Mm-hmm. But maybe let's go back a bit and think about your creative process. So what does it look like when you are writing the songs? Yeah, so I wrote these songs when I picked up the Irish bazooki because it was just 
collecting dust. Which is very interesting as well, yeah. Irish bouzouki. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, for the people that don't know, it's an eight-string, kind of like acoustic guitar, but almost, it's almost like a very medieval-sounding instrument. Yeah. Um, and I never really played it. I mean, we did buy it in, like, 2015, I think. Oh, but, really? Yeah, but we never actually did something with it so i was like okay well it's just collecting dust so but when you say you sorry when you said we bought it who do you mean oh yeah my brother and i used to make music and we were planning to do a lot of live stuff cool so we bought the bazooki um so that one of us would play bazooki but <laughs> like i said it never <laughs> happened so i picked up the bazooki and this was around September or October and um yeah the days were getting you know it, it gets darker sooner so I was like let's just close the curtains and just see what happens in the dark and um <laughs> so I had no idea how to play this instrument even it was very odd actually because everything you will hear on the album is just an idea that I had and I just went through with it. Like, I only discarded one song, I believe. Um, but the rest of it is just... It came from me sitting on the ground with a bazooki and... In the dark. In the dark, <laughs> yeah. And just kind of like... Yeah, I would just hum in the dark. And eventually mm -hmm. my parents would come in, like, expecting, you know, some light or me <laughs> sitting behind <laughs> the computer. But... I'd be there sitting <laughs> in the dark, so... They would find you meditating, kind of, with the Irish bouzouki. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. It probably looked like a ritual or whatever, but... <laughs> so that's really how uh, the songs came to be. But then for the actual process of writing it, uh, yeah, I did it all myself in my doll, which is Cubase, and... Mm -hmm. So I recorded my bazooki, my vocals, the bass. I did the demos for the electric guitars and also some of the orchestral instruments you'll hear. They were also sampled by me at first. So it was really just my own project at first. So, And then you teamed up with a couple of people yeah. along the way to help you realize it um like the drummer that you use casper yep correct and you had the mixing mastering engineer come along i believe your brother was also part of the process yep he um he's both the producer and the guitarist for um the whole album i guess how does it feel to be releasing something with your brother finally uh, it's nice. I mean, as a lot of people probably know who know me from Leo Bass covers, uh, we had a band called Orion and we were about to release uh, an EP. But it never really got recorded for some reason. Um, and then we didn't really have time to re-record it. And yeah, it, it felt a little bit bad, maybe. So it's very nice to release something with him playing something like his guitar of course um yeah so that is nice and i would like to use him of course for future releases but yeah <laughs> it's always nice to include friends and family for sure yeah yeah i can imagine this and uh, he's also a pretty good guitar player so oh yeah yeah he comes up with these melodies that are just um, simple enough but they hook you in yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Okay, well, about the creative process uh, with writing the first album, I am quite clear on that. Uh, but what goes on in your head uh, when you are thinking about the future and the new songs that you're going to be writing? Um, it is difficult. I mean, I am already working on the next album. Really? Already? Yeah, and um, <laughs> I'm sorry, could you hear my doorbell ringing? No. Okay, great. Um, so I'm working <laughs> on the second album already, and I think I have about 
30 minutes of music already. So, Whoa. yeah, and this is before the release of the album. So it is very difficult to kind of like stay with it and really build up the hype when you're already making something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And as most artists or musicians, they, well, they, they would probably agree with me for like... You get so sick of your music at some point. Mm. Um, I I still think it's good. But for example, when I Am Home came out, people were singing I Am Home and they were all very happy about it and hyped up. But (laughs) I really liked seeing that. But at the same time, I really wasn't in the mood to listen to I Am Home. You have been listening to it so much. So I can (laughs) can imagine (laughs) listening. Yeah. Even during the mastering process, I was really, really tired of hearing all these songs. So, (laughs) um, but yeah, you you have to stick to it and you have to support your music and not like, um, well, some artists do this. They'll say like, well, yeah, the first albums I made are decent, but I don't like it. And then there's some artists who will just say like, I completely forget about it. I hate it and such. <laughs> um, or they will say my first album is the very best and nothing could top it. Really? Yeah, there there are also such such cases, <laughs> but I think it's quite rare to find this, right? Because you are developing yourself and later on you're discovering you can do things in a better way. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Like I don't think I would I would be able to release an album that is worse than the previous album that doesn't really make sense to me at least yeah yeah i I think a person like you that's constantly developing will definitely release something uh, better or different yeah next time around okay well i want to brush upon a topic that is related more to mental health Uh, you have been open about the fact that you're diagnosed uh, with autism that happened a while back it is a mild case um, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, um, yeah, it is. I would say there seems to be a pattern with people that are creative in some way or have higher musical intelligence. Um, they seem to be accompanied by some kind of mental health condition. Um, doesn't have to be anything serious, but there is something there. Um, how was your personal experience or your awareness of being autistic um, playing a role and how did it influence your craft? I don't think... It actually had a lot of influence on the creative process. Although I did write a song about autism, which is uh, the sixth song on the album called Singulars, um, which is kind of like an anthem for autism. But um, I don't think it actually influenced the music. I would say that it kind of like influenced my maybe like the pace or how consistent I am with writing, maybe. Yeah. I think that could be in factor. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, really. I mean, there's also the fact that I have written about 20 songs by now, and it just doesn't feel like I'm running out of ideas. And <laughs> it feels like I just I can keep going, keep going. And even when I'm writing music, I just... I. I can keep going forever, it feels like. so. Hmm. Do you find yourself then thinking in melodies? As in for the music or just in general? Um, Yeah, sometimes, I would say. But I don't really think that it's very much tied into autism. Uh, I think it can be like a subject or a topic for a song, but I wouldn't say that it has had like an impact on the music or the process or actually maybe it has a little bit of an impact on uh, the post-processing. Yeah, in what way? Promoting and marketing. I think that's a little bit more difficult because you really just want to be done with things. With marketing and promoting, you really have to you know, keep promoting, keep everything up and just really push yourself and yeah, maybe maybe that's... I mean, I'm not saying you have to lie when you're promoting. Yeah. But I, I have to be honest about everything. So when I'm, for example, 
having to promote my music to a curator, like a Spotify playlist curator or mm -hmm. just someone, uh, it always feels very forced to me because I don't really want to send my music to anyone. I think it's great that my music gets shared, but I don't want to be the person that actually has <laughs> to make you know that push. Yeah, yeah the aspect of yeah. self-promotion. It feels very, very bad to me, but I guess it is something that you'll learn um, yeah yeah it's something necessary nowadays yeah i would say so you gotta find your way to to do it but like you mentioned on the other hand it makes you really determined definitely to keep persisting to keep going i think that's also something you might be able to hear in the music i'm not even sure but i would say that most artistic people or sorry people with autism <laughs> um <laughs> are somewhat perfectionistic yeah or at least a lot of them yeah true. um i have learned to kind of deal with perfectionism and just at some point say like okay it's not gonna get any better so it's finished it's done um <laughs> i think that was very important to um learn because i know some artists who They even after the release, they want to still improve these songs. So, yeah, it hasn't really had a big impact or um, influence on my process, I would say. Okay, do you have a song from the album that you can call your favorite song or song that you're so happy with that you don't want to improve on at all? Ooh, um, there are a lot of songs that I would like to improve. <laughs> um, I think that I'm Home is the most complete song, for me at least. And the same goes for the third song, That's All Right, which is also the third single. I think those two songs are very solid. And yeah, I, I, I wouldn't change anything about those songs. The rest I'm not sure about, but <laughs> those two... Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> those two, you would say, you would pick up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, with That's Alright, I really like That's Alright, and especially the outro, <laughs> which is which is really, um, I think, in 7-8. In uh, yeah, it switches between 7-8 and 4, I believe. 7-8 is a very common, let's say, metric for... Bulgarian national folklore yeah. music, so I, I I feel personally connected to it. Well, you also released your second single, Terra. In what way is it different to I Am Home, you would say? So Terra's probably different because well not probably it is different because it's only the bazooki and our voices oh, and there's a bass as well but compared to I Am Home it doesn't sound as full maybe or complete it's just a very calm ballad but the main difference is that there's also a guest vocalist on Terra which is of course you <laughs> <laughs> that is super funny, but yeah, it's me. <laughs> it is. I think the Terra is mainly just different because of the guest appearance, yeah. Yeah, it's a very mellow song, actually. Mellow yeah. with a hint of sadness in there. Is it nature-related, nature-inspired? Oh, definitely is nature-inspired. The idea was kind of to make it sound like I am singing... I mean, it, it, essentially, it sounds like a very romantic song. Yeah. Um, especially with the She Makes Me See Light and Beauty. Yeah. You would think that it is about a girl, but then you start singing, and then it's like, okay. And then mm. eventually we start singing <laughs> She Makes Us See. Hopefully, people will think, what is this even about? And yes, it is about nature and just the fact that Well, it depends for everyone. Like, for me, when I go outside and surround myself with nature, um, 
it really gives me a lot of ideas and it really makes me see some more light, I would say. And yeah, I think this really is the same for a lot of people as well. So it's a little bit of that about nature and it's also a little bit about just people completely neglecting nature. And yeah. even though I'm the absolute worst and very like um, I'm like a hypocrite because <laughs> I'm usually just at home behind my computer. But when you listen to Terra, it almost sounds like I'm always outside and I'm always, <laughs> you know, between trees and you name it, you know, lying on the grass. <laughs> That's very much not the case. But at some points in my life I am. So, yeah, it's it more is, about it is a, um, a relatable song. I would think that people can relate to it. And yeah, even though we are all in one way or another hypocrites when it comes to nature, we still love nature. I, I believe that I hope so. people, yes, that people are good in their intentions and that we just need a little bit of education sometimes to know what to do better. Yeah. And to, yeah, to take care of the mother nature, mother earth. Yeah. If anything, I hope it's somewhat of a push to just go out and yeah, just really enjoy nature. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully uh, that's how it it is received by others as well. Yeah. All right. Um, I do have a very weird question for you. Um, if you could swap places with someone who inspires you, who would that be? Maybe an artist? Ooh. No, no, it, it wouldn't be an artist. Um, it also wouldn't be some super rich person. I think... <laughs> Um, knowing myself, I'd probably pick some sort of sports person. Or, you know, okay, I'll pick Zlatan Ibrahimovic because... <laughs> Why Zlatan? <laughs> not only do I look a little bit like him, but um, I think it would be very cool to swap with him. Wait, it's just for a day, right? Or for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's say for a day. Sure. I'll swap with Zlatan on the day that he has to play some sort of important football game. <laughs> so you are a football match fan then? I am, yeah. I used to play a lot of football. Uh, don't really have the time for it anymore. But um, yeah, I'd love to experience just that level of team play as well as, you know, playing in a big arena or stadium, whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be very, very cool. But yeah, I sometimes miss the team play when it comes to anything really just thinking with other people and really having a strategy to do something because you know mm. with the music you're on your own and especially with music I find that when you're writing with someone else it's very much about opinions and like do you like yeah. this riff do you like that whereas you know something like football it's just about scoring a goal right <laughs> so <laughs> it's nice to to build up or to work towards a very simple goal and to really push yourself with you know other people so yeah i'd, I'd swap with zlatan <laughs> okay and if you imagine yourself post covid times of course performing to a larger audience, do you have a dream venue or maybe dream festival or event you want to perform at? I think I would do something like an outdoors venue. Like, um, I know that in, I think it's in California, there's like Red Rocks. I know Opeth, for example, played there. Mm, yes. Um, but for me, a dream which could be somewhat realistic i would say maybe lorelei i think it's called in uh, germany um i know it from night of the prog um which is just a beautiful beautiful venue it's kind of like an uh how do you call it like an amphitheater and it's yeah it, it looks amazing so i think that would be quite nice oh i would love to visit such a venue why do you think people should listen to your songs? What do you believe they will appreciate in your debut album? Um, 
That's a good question. I'm not yeah, sure, actually. It's a tricky question. It is very tricky. <laughs> um, I don't know, really. I wouldn't say that everybody has to listen to my music. I, w I would feel bad about that. <laughs> it's very specific, my music. Um, but I would say that my music is somewhat refreshing, maybe, mm -hmm. in the sense that, I mean, when I was writing, okay, I wasn't thinking like it has to sound like this it has to sound like that exactly and it doesn't it doesn't sound like anything i think yeah it, it really doesn't yeah for some reason i can only think of moments in you know some songs where it's like ah that sounds a bit like this band or this artist but when i listen to i am home for example or any of the songs i'm just thinking like i don't really know an artist that sounds like this And there, there's probably there's probably an artist somewhere that sounds exactly like this, but I don't know them or him or her, whatever. Um, so I would say that, yeah, it is quite refreshing maybe um, to hear this. I wouldn't say new music, but in a way, I guess it is somewhat new and almost a genre of its own maybe. But that is, yeah. that's very yeah. bad to say, though. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be well, the special snowflake here. No, I, I know what you mean. And I would also probably feel uncomfortable saying that about um, anything related to what I come up with. But yeah. I understand it because we listened to I Am Home. I've listened to it a lot of times. And I remember the first time I received one of the demos for I Am Home. I Even back then, I thought... Okay, that sounds like nothing I can compare it to at this moment. <laughs> and I still am not able to really compare it to anything, which is really good for you, especially in, well, there's so much music that has been done already and created. So it's quite an achievement to produce something that's different and stands on its own. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I am glad about that, of course. Um, I know that a lot of artists struggle with, finding their sound, finding their tones, you name it. So I'm very glad that it all came naturally for me. And and even with the second album I'm writing, I'm still thinking like, it doesn't really sound like anything I listen to, anything I know. Of course, there's moments in there that sound like yeah. some bands. But yeah, it really feels like I have a little bit of my own style. So yeah, that's very great, really. Which are the artists and bands that you do derive inspiration from? Um, let me think, because I do listen to a lot of music, but I wouldn't say that there is a particular band I listen to that really... Uh, it's not like that I'm listening to music and I'm like, ah, I'm going to do this <laughs> or I'm, I'm going to try to replicate it or whatever. Um So I would say that, uh, of course, the music for me started when I uh, listened to Tamino, yeah, which is a Belgian artist who is yeah, he's amazing. He is, and he is. I think he's like a month older than me or something. Um, oh wow! And he writes this very, I would say, dark and moody. And a bit oriental. Very, yeah, very oriental as yeah. well. Um, so I would say a little bit of Tamino maybe. But then again, he just really made me pick up an instrument and sing. Uh, but when it comes to really bands, I would say maybe Pain of Salvation for just their creativity. Uh, yes. And for, I think, for vocals and vocal melodies... I'm gonna go with Gaspacho and maybe Riverside as well. And these are all progressive rock bands, by the way. Yeah, um, indeed. I think these are really big influences. Our our listeners that know you from your YouTube channel will beg to differ and they'll probably say, well, where is Tool? Because yeah. you've covered the whole discography of Tool or something. This is true, yeah. Um It doesn't really sound like to 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 me, at least. Yeah. Um, 
Some people have. But is it, is it inspiring you, though? Is too inspiring you? No, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that... Um, Take that, Maynard. <laughs> I would say that the vocals are inspiring for me. But then again, I could say the same for A Perfect Circle and Pussifer. Whereas yeah. Tool's music, like the instrumentals, it's very different to my music. And maybe it sounds a little bit more like Tool on the second album, but um, I, w- I wouldn't say that Tool is a big influence on me, even though they're my favorite band. So, yeah. <laughs> Interesting there, yeah. So then your listeners will have to suffice with your covers, your bass covers yeah, of Tool. Definitely. If there are any new ones. Like a, like a new album, I suppose. Yeah. If they will put out a new EP, yeah. I think. But yeah, yeah. they will. <laughs> They're going to have to suck it up, I guess. Yes, I guess so. But like I said, you have a very good fellow following, friendly bunch. So yeah. I think they will be patient for this. Um, okay, we do have one signature question for our podcast, and that's related to our title. So we are called Stellar Sound. What do you associate this with? Stellar Sound. Uh, oddly enough, um, I associate it with like a telescope for some reason. Mm. Um, maybe this is because it has the word stellar and I'm thinking about interstellar. Yeah. Which I, yeah, sure. <laughs> I've only seen a little bit of. I haven't even finished the movie. But um, yeah, I just see like a big telescope in my mind's eye. And um, I can be all very deep about, you know, this podcast is looking into the future of music. <laughs> back um, to the future. Or back to the future even, <laughs> um, which would be more more cool. Um, but no, that's oh. really what I hear. Oh, Leo, do you hear my drilling? There are neighbors drilling. Oh, dear. Yeah, I definitely hear that. <laughs> if you could be anything else other than a musician, what would you be? Ooh, um... Like profession, right? Yeah. Oh, I would say... I mean, I studied forestry when I was younger, um, mm. which I dropped out of. But I really wanted to be like a... How do you call it? Like a forest ranger. Yeah. <laughs> and just be, you know, surrounded with trees and such. But um, Then you would have been a lot more in nature. Yeah, a lot more. A lot more. Um, and when I picked this course i was like thinking that while i was maybe walking in the forest or you know marking trees or whatever Mm -hmm. which is all you do if you are a forest ranger (laughs) you just look at um you're trying to spot dead trees or trees that are growing in a way that they shouldn't and i was thinking like oh i can just you know practice my singing during that (laughs) but um, it would have been perfect it would have been yeah I still think that would be very nice. Uh, and if I couldn't do that, then maybe... I don't know. I've al- I've always liked stuff with food. <laughs> so maybe like <laughs> a bakery or whatever. But then again, yeah. you have to get up at 4 a.m. to, um, you know, put in the breads and uh, make those breads, prepare those breads. So <laughs> probably not a bakery. Yeah. So you'd rather have a bit more freedom over your personal time, I imagine. Yeah, I, I ideally I would start at like, you know, 1 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> so I could at least, you know, sleep a little bit. Not like 8 or 8.30 like the rest of us plebs. Exactly. With our office jobs. Exactly. You know. I mean, hmm. I used to work in a supermarket and um, yeah, I had to get up. At, usually it was like six or seven, but um, there were at least two days during the week where you had to get up at uh, four forty-five, which was just depressing for me. Yeah. And um, yeah, I remember being very ill all of all of the time and being sleep deprived, and my music and the covers were really suffering from this. And um, 
yeah, I really don't want to do that ever again. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you, actually, did they, did that affect in any way your productivity or your the quality of the music that you were bringing out? Yeah, um, it definitely did. And I think it was in January when I started to get a lot of those very early shifts. Uh, that's January 2019, by the way. Yeah. Um, and it was getting worse and worse, and I was noti- noticing that um, I, w- I was, you know, I was planning to record the album, and of course, I recorded almost the entire album uh, at home, just in my room. Yeah. And not in a studio. So, um, a lot of the times, I had to record after work and in the evening, and. At that point, I was already very tired and very, mm, very yeah. drained. So I really had to push myself. Uh, and I think that if I didn't push myself during that time, I would have been... I, th- I think the album would have come out like next year, somewhere in the summer or, you know, fall maybe, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then uh, when I think about just how it affected me in general i think that i mean yesterday i was thinking about this as well and i actually remember myself um being very emotional during work and it i was super sleep deprived right and mm-hmm. i actually remember yeah. myself just like because you know every supermarket has uh, a radio and yeah. i remember you just you know feeling the whatever dairy section and what what song came on? It was um, Dire Straits, Sultans of Swing. Oh, yeah, good song. Yeah, I was just like tearing up from the guitar solo. I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. <laughs> and then I was like, what am I doing? Like, I'm at work, I'm like getting emotional. I'm just so, yeah. so tired. <laughs> so, yeah, it really affected me. That must have been like a push for you, additional motivation and push to just yeah. focus on your craft. Yeah, the, the radio in the supermarket also really wanted to make, like, it pushed me to make more music and go home, eat music, music, music. <laughs> so definitely, yeah. And then you come up with the first single, I Am Home. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that ties well into it. <laughs> okay. Mm, well, Leo, at the end of each episode, we also like to do something fun with a couple of rubrics. And one rubric that I have prepared for this episode is called Cringe or Worst Cringe Song. Oh, no. What is that worst cringe song that you can think of for you? Which one is it? Oh, is it like a guilty pleasure or like... Um, it can be guilty pleasure, but I would say more to the negative. So leaning more to an absolute cringe song that you don't want to hear, one, don't want to listen to. Ooh, well, it would have to be... Um, actually, I don't know that many songs like that. Um, I was going to say I would, I would pick WAP from... Uh, What's her name? Cardi B or whatever. Wow, I I don't even know that song. You don't know it. It's um, I think it's like the number one hit right now. Or not right now, probably like a couple of months ago. (laughs) Um, Which is all about, um, yeah, I mean, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, it's just... Sexual innuendo. It's very sexual. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think that's my that's my pick. All right, sure. and then what would be the guilty pleasure song, or maybe not even songs, but a mm. genre that people would not expect that you're listening to? Um, I do listen to a lot of genres, so I mean, the thing that hits me first is like disco. I really like disco, um, but then again, I don't even know that many disco songs actually, so maybe. Oh, actually, you know what? Do you know, um, there's this new artist, or kind of like new. Her name is uh, Ash Nico or something. 
No. Do you know her? No, never heard of it. Um, she has a song called Daisy, which I sometimes listen to because for some, I actually, I really don't like the verses, right? I think it's, you know, it's a fun character and she writes in this way, which is, you know, super sexual and super um, whatever. Now I'm curious to check her out. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> should. But the chorus is actually quite nice and it reminds me of a uh, system of a dan for some reason wow yeah which is i just i didn't uh, i didn't expect to hear such a chorus in a very <laughs> sexual yeah. pop song like that so i guess <laughs> i would say daisy yeah okay so then after we're done with the podcast i'm going to google and i will check it out sure <laughs> pretty curious now um, all right. How do you think the music scene will change now post-COVID or maybe unrelated to COVID, but for the artists in the near future? And what will happen with the promotion of content digitally or offline, you think? Um, I would say that the whole pandemic has kind of like pushed artists and labels to be more uh, creative maybe oh yeah because you do see a lot of um live streams all of a sudden like um show pre-recorded live streams i mean they're typically just in like a venue or in a studio yeah recording for literally nobody um <laughs> so i think that is definitely something that has changed um well this is like a prediction right so yeah, it's a prediction. I don't think that a lot will change for music and live music because people will always want to enjoy, you know, shows and festivals. So yeah, I don't think that will change necessarily. Um, if there's going to be a change for something like that, then it's probably, you know, um, something like... At Glastonbury, for example, they, um, I think they tried to make the toilets more nature friendly or whatever. <laughs> by, um, if you went to the toilet, I think you were, um, you could put in some sort of sand, I think, and that would somehow dissolve your, um, whatever you dropped in there. Um, some, some sort of eco friendly, you know. But in terms of actual music, I don't think a lot will change. Uh, I don't. I think we will see more live streams like that and more pre-recorded uh, videos. And also, I think that artists and bands will be even more active on YouTube or whatever video platform that comes along. There will be more videos i think because if you look at a band like what are they called wolfpack or something um mm. they are very i mean i don't even listen to them but i think somebody showed me at some point that their videos not only do they release music videos they also do playthroughs they also do just like vlogs they do a whole bunch of stuff and i think that's becoming more and more popular and more uh, I guess it's more modern, really. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I think every digital platform and medium will be used to the max capacity Yeah. to promote your craft and your band, your music, your songs. Exactly. And music is so... Um, like, you can do so much with music and you can earn from in so many ways from music. So, for example... Uh, you have the speed speed metal band or power metal, I don't know, uh, Dragon Force. And their their guitarist is a Twitch streamer. Mm, yeah. And he just, he's standing there with his guitar and he's talking and he's probably playing a little bit. And, you know, he earns money from that. And, yeah, I think that's very much a thing that we're going to have more of in the future. Um, and a lot less real life promoting and you know trying to get into venues trying to play shows in like a bar or smaller stuff like that i think 
people are really going to focus on yeah just promoting online and mainly having the music be this very online thing that people can easily find rather than somebody saying like oh you're a guitarist um can you play me a song or can you sing me a song hmm. i think it's yeah very different now yeah so you do you do feel like uh, it's going to be subsiding a bit the offline playing or presentation of music yeah definitely definitely all right um now we're almost at the end of our interview together in our discussion i do want to ask you to think of a statement or an icebreaker question maybe that we can pass along to our next guest we're going to do a metaphorical link between yourself and our next guest And we are actually going to ask our listeners and our audience to help us with deciding who our next guest should be. Right. So it's a bit of a mystery, but what would be your question or your statement? Would it have to be music related or could it be anything? No, it can be anything that we can start with and we will just tell them that is just Leo's icebreaker question to you. Right. Um... I like to keep it simple, so I will just ask the next guest um, if pineapple should be on a pizza, Ooh. and what is your favorite pizza? <laughs> oh, we're gonna get a <laughs> we're gonna get a good division of opinions, I think here. Probably yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank you very much, Leo, for being our first ever guest. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, you're welcome. It was a good discussion, I think, and we can use it later on to even improve our podcast. And that is also an open feedback to our listeners here. Please, if you have any suggestions for us how we can do it better next time, shoot with constructive comments. Keep it civil. All right. So, Leo, how can people connect with you online? Um, literally everywhere. But for my music, you can find me on Instagram as Just Leo Music, on Facebook as Just Leo Music, and on YouTube as Just Leo. And I'm sure my name will pop up on Spotify if you type in Just Leo. So that's all I think. Thank you once again and for all our listeners, thank you very much for tuning in for the first time with us. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube and listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. For even more direct contact and fun discussions, of course you're welcome to join our Discord server as well, Stellar Sound Podcast. Now I want to remind you guys, we have our first sponsor that is Faye Games. FAE Games. In 2021, they are launching a new campaign setting. So if you want to know more or chat with the creators, just join their Discord on www.faegames.com slash community. That is www.faegames.com slash community. I want to thank the team of Stellar Sound Podcast for making this first episode possible. And of course, thank you, our listeners, for tuning in. Don't forget, we are waiting for your comments and we are very curious to know whom do you wish us to invite to our second podcast episode. So let's tune in next time and bye for now. Bye.